Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. In this one we're going to introduce a new color theme for our application and also we're going to build this a theme switcher. I think this is very very powerful feature especially for people who have strong opinion on how they want their application to look like. And also it's very easy and very interesting to implement. So let's start. Go with Sloba. And just before we continue with our tutorial, I just want to give you guys one huge recommendation. So if you're new to React and you're learning React and React Native, this is a book that you don't want to miss. What I like about this book is that it first covers all the basics of React. And first of all, it starts with JavaScript. Once you're fully comfortable with React and JavaScript, then you transition towards the TypeScript. And in this first section, you'll learn everything about the syntax, hooks, functional components, even handling, how to fetch data, and all the good things that you need from React. And then starting from the second part, it goes into React Native, which essentially goes hand in hand with React. And there you can learn about responsive layouts, animations, geolocation, and all the things that you need in order to build React Native applications. So to cut the chase, if you're new to React and React Native, this is the book that you don't want to miss. Link is going to be in the description box below. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to change this dark theme that we have as a default one. As you can see here, this button that we have, I want to change this to a purple like theme so what we can do is let's head over to chatcn uh, ui and then you can go here and you can click on this themes tab in here we can very easily customize the theme that we are going to implement in our application so let me just refresh this so this is a default theme that we have out of the box and we can click on this customize button here so let's say actually these are all the settings that i want so probably this is the cache but uh, if you load this for the first time most likely you're going to have this default button checked and this zinc color so as you can see this is something that we have installed uh, with our application so but i want to customize this so here i'm going to choose this new york style and i want to use this violet for me i like a uh, smaller border radius so this is why i choose 0 0.3 but you can choose whatever you want and obviously you can preview here how it looks like and here we can check how this theme looks like on a dark and on a light because we're going to have both of these uh, themes so now when you're ready uh, when you have choose your customized settings what you can do is uh, we can actually close this tab and we can just copy this code so just click on this copy code and we're going to get this huge model and bunch of these uh, css variables the first uh, chunk of code is for the light theme here for the root and the second one is for the dark as it says here for the dark class all we need to do is just copy this entire section and now we can go to our visual studio code and just paste this and now in my vs code i want to open app folder so let me close this dashboard so it doesn't confuse us and this components folder and let's find this globals.css file here we have obviously global css file settings so the first at layer base is the class that i want to remove so let's remove the first one the second one we still need so now let's just paste the code that we have copied on the previous step and now we can save this and now let's head over to our application to see what we have and as you can see we have this purple color applied to our application and if we go to a home page so let me just navigate to a home page or a landing page you can see now that this effortless text is purple and also this button is purple and this perfectly matches with our image here nice so now we can get started and get back to our application so now what i want to do is instead of this text I want to add a toggle button so that we can navigate between the light and the dark theme. So let's head over to VS Code once again. In order to implement this, we need a package first. So let's install this package, npm install, and the name of the package is next-themes, like this. So let's install this and let's wait for a couple of seconds. And now the package has been installed and we have this available to our repository. So now let's head over and implement this package. Now, since we're going to have multiple providers in our application, I want to create a separate file where we're going to store all these providers. So in the app folder, let's create a new file and let's name it as providers.tsx like this. And here I want to define this as a client component. So use client and let's use our shortcut to create this component and let's rename this one to be uppercase providers and this component is going to receive children here and we want just to render these children but here let's define what is the type of the children just to satisfy typescript so react dot react node like this and let's remove this div and just implement react fragments and here we can just render the children children like this and now we can go and create a theme provider and import it here and wrap our children with it. So let's head over to our components folder here. 
and let's create a new file and let's name it as theme-provider.tsx let's declare this one also as a client component so use client like this and once again let's create our component using the shortcut and here let's name this one as theme provider as a camel case this provider will receive two things the first one is children and the second one is props so let's destructure the props like this and let's import a couple of things from next themes so first of all let's import theme provider as next theme provider from next themes dash themes like this and also we want to import a type so let's import type theme provider props like this so we can satisfy our TypeScript. So now let's add types to our theme provider. So theme provider props like this. And in the return statement, instead of rendering div, we can render this next theme provider like this. And instead of using this text, we can render our children like this. And we can pass in the properties that we have from the props. So here we can just destructure the props that we are getting as argument here. And just make sure to add this type definition inside of the object and not as a return type here. And we can save this. And now we can use this inside of our providers file. Now let's include this theme provider here and we can import it from the components folder that we just created here and make sure that the closing tag is also the same name here. And now I want to add a couple of attributes to our theme provider here. The first one is attribute and I want to add a class name. So essentially here we are telling what attribute you want to modify. So you can provide a custom attribute, so let's say data dash class or whatever you want to be customized. In my case, I want to customize or modify a class attribute. The next one is we want to set what is the default theme when we load our application. And in this case, let it be system. But in order to use the system or actually the setting that has been set up in your operating system or your browser like Chrome, we need to enable system first. So let's add enable system attribute as well. And the last thing is I want to disable transition on change. So whenever we are changing from light to a dark theme, I want to disable animation or CSS animation rather. So let's save this one. And now we have implemented this provider file. Now we can include it inside of our application. So let's open Explorer and let's find the root layout. And here in the root layout, we want to wrap our children with the providers that we have just created. So let's import the providers and let's just wrap the children with it. Let me grab the children and just put it inside of the providers array. And now we have these providers available to our application. But one thing I want to add to HTML, and this is the suppress hydration warning. So essentially this warning happens during the development. And sometimes the component which is rendered on the server and on the client are different. And this normally happens, but on the build and on the production, this works normal as expected. So let's just add this attribute here. Okay, and now make sure to save this and we can now go and implement our toggle button. So let's open the components folder and let's open the UI or actually not the UI but actually here we have this theme toggle.tsx file and here we want to implement our button so the first thing that I want to do is I want to declare this as a use client component since we're gonna have some functionality that happens on the browser and now we can use the use theme hook that we have installed with the next themes package so this hook returns us a function that is called set theme and using this function we're going to be able to switch between the themes so let's call this use theme hook and make sure to import it from next themes and now in the return statement i want to add a drop down menu so let's remove this div and let's import the drop down menu and make sure to import it from components ui not from the radix dash ui like this and inside of this drop down menu i want to have a trigger first so let's import drop down trigger and let's find it from the list it's easier than typing for me or actually let's let's just type it drop down trigger here and it's from the components for slash ui like this and i want to render this as a child so which essentially means remove this component and just render the child so and inside of this drop down trigger we're going to have a button so let's type in a button and make sure to import this button and this button is going to have a variant of outline and we're going to have size to icon because essentially this is just going to hold two icons which is sun and moon icons and as i said inside of this button i'm going to have a sun and a moon icon so let's import sun icon from lucid react like this and we're going to import also moon icon as well and now we want to add some classes to it so it's style a little bit different and actually let me make this as a self-closing tag like this 
and let's do the same for the moon icon and now as i said i want to add a class name and i want to style it using some css attributes so first of all we want to make the height and the width to be consistent so let's use 1.2 rams for the height and same goes for the width so 1.2 rams like this and now let's set the rotate to be zero like this and scale to be 100 so this is going to be at full scale by default next i want to set transition all so that we're actually transitioning all the properties that we add here and when we have a dark theme, we want to style it as rotate-90. And also on the dark, we want to scale this down, scale-0, like this. Now I want to do something similar for moon icon, but I just want to reverse the engineering. So let me just copy this entire class name and let me paste it here. Also, I want to add a position to be absolute here like this. And here for the default settings, we want to just reverse. For rotate, let's set to 90. And for the scale, by default, we want to set to zero. And for the dark on the rotate, we want to set it to zero and scale we want to scale this to a hundred percent like this and next to our drop down menu trigger i want to import drop down menu content like this and i want to align it to an end so let's add an attribute align end like this and inside of the drop down menu content we're going to have drop down menu item so drop down menu item like this and instead of these items we're just going to have a text and when we click on this text we want just to switch the themes so for the first one it's going to be a light and i want to add on click event so on click here we're just going to call a new function and this function is going to utilize the set theme function that we are getting back from the use theme hook so let's copy this set theme function and for the first one obviously we want to set to light like this and now let's copy this entire item and paste it a couple of times so the second one is going to be dark and also let's update the label to be dark and the last one is going to be system system so this essentially copies whatever is by default on your system operating system browser system whatever you use okay and let's just save this and with this we have successfully completed our theme toggle component the only problem that i see right now is that we have this red underline and this is because we are not calling our use theme hook so let's call this hook and now red underline goes away so let's head over to our application right now and see if our theme toggle works as we expected so here if you go and click this button we get this light and dark and system option so if you click on the dark beautiful we get this dark theme if you click on a system i have actually dark so we're not going to see any changes but if we click on a light it should go back and this is essentially all i wanted to show you in this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed it i think that we have much nicer and much more beautiful application right now and i see you guys in the following tutorials and if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.